Hello there. It is the evening of April 13th, 2013. My name is Rob. I, uh, I'm a pretty normal, pretty average American from Northeast Indiana. I, uh, I run a business for a living. I, I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a Christian. And I'm a patriot. I am what I would term an involved American. And tonight's video is addressed specifically to Republican elected legislators at the federal level. I'm talking about U.S. Senators and U.S. Congressmen. And it's important, I think, for you to hear what I have to say. Uh, the subject of my video is pretty narrow. It involves the rights of Americans under the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution. Now, why would I address this video specifically to Republican legislators? Well, I guess to oversimplify things, but effectively so, I think. <clears throat> what I have to say uh, functionally does not apply to Democratic legislators. Uh, I don't expect them to get what I'm about to say, but I do expect you to get it. And I think there are tens, if not hundreds, of millions of other Americans who expect you to get it. And this week, a significant number of you failed us. This week, uh, a test vote to authorize debate on the full Senate floor of Bill S-649 was voted upon by the vaunted body, the Senate of the United States. And 16 of you Republican senators voted yay, voted to authorize and allow debate of a bill that, in a very literal, very bold, very illegal way, <clears throat> would make the law of the land an infringement upon the right of the people to keep and bear arms. Uh, many of you 16, if not all of you 16, have on your resumes great scorecards from the NRA. By the way, the NRA is me. I'm the special interest. <clears throat> and millions and millions like me. And when you cast your votes in the Senate this week authorizing this debate, you had ready <clears throat> public statements for your staffers to hand out to the callers on the backed up jammed phone lines uh, saying that your support for the Second Amendment hadn't waned, that you were not wavering in your commitment, but that you just wanted to have and allow a debate of these issues to do them justice. Well, to debate an unalienable right, to authorize a debate of an unalienable right in an assembly of men, especially when it's a, a right that we universally recognize in America as, been, as having been given to us by God, is a horrible affront to God and a horrible affront to what our founders agreed upon when they founded this nation. Get this straight, Republicans in the Senate and in the House. We will no longer tolerate your cavalier, reckless, and irresponsible use of our rights as bargaining chips, tools for negotiation with people in your body, Democrats, who have no interest in the kind of America that we grew up with, that our founders set out for us. This will become, for millions of us who vote Republican, an issue which will determine whether you get to keep your jobs. Now, we realize you live much of your lives in a culture of compromise uh, where convictions mean a little and the process of perpetuating business as usual rules the day. But we need to remind you, and 
I hope I'm not the only one who will send you this message. We need to remind you that you work for us, that we are patriots, that we are Americans, and we understand how poor a job you and your colleagues are doing of running the business of the U.S. We understand that you take turns driving the bus off the cliff. We understand that you spend our money like drunken sailors. We don't really expect much from you economically. We don't expect much from you in foreign policy. You do a pretty good job of embarrassing us there too. We don't expect you to guide the moral ship of America. Because uh, you don't do that very well either. We don't really expect you to protect us. That's why one of the reasons why we have the Second Amendment. Uh, so that we individually can make sure we and our families and our property are safe from criminals. We can do that ourselves. We have the right and the responsibility to do so. Please stay out of it. The other reason we have the Second Amendment is one that's a little more insidious. Uh, one that should hit you close to home. The other reason we have the Second Amendment is that the people who wrote it had just had to fight for their freedom from a tyrannical government. And let's face it, senators and congressmen with ours behind your name, as your government continues to mismanage our money and finds it running out, and finds its constitu constituency in increasing levels of panic and need which you can no longer satisfy. Your control over your people is going to be difficult to maintain. Uh, the way you're managing our country, stability, is probably not going to be here much longer and you have yourselves to blame for that. Uh, when, you, when your government decides to reach and grasp at the power it's losing, it's not going to be at our expense. Please understand, the tools and the means that we individual Americans have gathered and prepared to keep our families and our property and our lives safe are never going to be in your hands. And you Republican legislators, as a condition of your continued employment, better get that straight. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. I think you and the people who came before you have infringed upon that enough. And because of the general instability of our nation and our government and our budget, we don't expect a lot from you, and we know bad times are probably coming. So I, for the first time in my life, have become a single issue voter. I know you're gonna mess the rest of it up. That record is pretty crystal, crystal clear. But if you wanna keep your jobs, Republican senators and congressmen, please understand, you should make no vote. You should allow no bill to come to a floor of either House of Congress if you have enough votes to filibuster that further infringes upon our right to keep and bear arms. You have enough of those laws, you don't enforce them. Let's look at the NICS system, for instance. Background checks are pretty extensive now. 76,000 applications were submitted last year by people who were found by that system not to be lawful owners of guns. 
13 of them were prosecuted. Now, that's a pretty telling statistic. 76,000 people were identified by the system as not to be eligible to buy a firearm, were unlawful for even applying. 13 of them were prosecuted. What does that say? It says that the background check system we currently have in place isn't designed to keep people from buying firearms who aren't lawfully allowed to do so. What it is is a system to collect data on those of us who do purchase firearms. We'll tolerate no more of that. You have enough. You have too much. Time to stop. I encourage all my viewers who see this video to post similar videos. I encourage you to make them available to your legislators, to your senators, to your congressmen, especially my YouTube buddies from Tennessee. You have two senators with R's behind their names, Senator Alexander and Senator Corkle. <clears throat> they need to hear from you, YouTubers. They've already heard from Artis and Tony. They need to hear from more of you. You guys need to know how your senators and how your congressmen are voting. And you need to keep the heat up. If they are wafflers who don't really want to be on board, you need to keep the heat up. If they are true believers who are just getting beat down and they are losing their resolve, you need to buck them up. You need to give them encouragement. You need to put fire back in their bellies. We can't lose this, guys. That's all I have for tonight. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good night.